Fairmont Coal Company had two mines in Monongah, West Virginia. The Monongah Mines No. 6 and No. 8 were located on the Monongahela River, six miles south of Fairmont, West Virginia. At that time, the Fairmont Coal Company ran model mines as it was on the forefront of using electrical equipment in the extraction of coal. It had huge ventilation mechanical fans, electrical coal cutting machinery, and locomotives to haul the coal out of the mines. The morning of December 6, 1907 will forever be associated with the date of the worst mine disaster in America history. This disaster would take the lives of at least 360 men and give birth to the United States Bureau of Mines. This disaster could have been a lot worse than it was. As it predated the Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938 by three decades, officially there were 367 men who showed up for work that morning. According to one source, the explosion occurred at 10.28 a.m., most of the men inside of the mine died instantly. Because of the explosion, the blast caused a great deal of damage to the mine and to the surface. The ventilation systems and mechanical fans were destroyed. Brick stopping that were used to direct airflow through the mines were blown apart. The roof collapsed because the mine timbers supporting the roof were blown away or destroyed. All of the roof and walls were compromised. Rail cars and other equipment were damaged beyond repair. According to one source, a miner had been operating a trainload of coal cars up the shaft from the processing plant. One of the couplings broke loose and sent 18 two-ton coal cars speeding down the mine shaft. When the coal cars crashed into the mining wall, it had cut electrical cables that ignited the coal dust in the air. The wreckage from this accident was scattered for 250 feet with the cars piled on top of one another. The cars were found nearly blocking the entrance to the number 6 slope. It is also believed that the Fairmont Coal Company's number 6 and number 8 mines were connected that this contributed to the size of the explosion. This connection allowed for more casualties. Also, this mine had been using mechanical equipment that was in its early stages of development. This is thought to have contributed to the amount of coal dust in the air which would have made the fire more likely. There was also a lack of watering and dust removal systems in the mines, or they were not up to standards. The immigrant workers in the mines were not aware of this, and it is believed that this also played a factor in the safety of the mine. Because of the severe damage to the mine, an official investigation into the cause of the mine explosion was hampered. It is believed by officials that an electrical spark or one of the miner's open flame lamps ignited the methane gas or coal dust. The goal was to bring out as many men as possible alive out of the mine. The first volunteer responders were on the scene and into the entrance of the mine within 25 minutes. In a vain attempt to protect themselves, the rescue miners covered their faces with strips of cloth and coats to be able to breathe in the gaseous conditions. The first responders could only stay in the mines for 15 minutes at one time before they became overwhelmed by the gases that was involved. Five miners, one Polish and four Italian miners did survive and was rescued. Because the ventilation system was destroyed in the explosion, it very quickly became a recovery effort instead of a rescue. The gases quickly suffocated anyone who survived the initial blast that was trapped in the mine. It took five days to bring out 337 men from the mine. It took a further week to bring out 17 more men, and the last eight were brought out two weeks later. There were several cases of entire families being wiped out from the disaster, leaving only the widows and distraught mothers behind. The official death toll within the mine was 362 miners. Among those that did not make it were 171 Italian migrants, 94 Slavs from Austria-Hungary, and the rest were composed of Polish, Czechs, Slavics, Serbs, and Ukrainians, 
The rest of the miners were Americans from the area. There were five toxic gas combinations to humans and animals that can occur in a coal mine. The fire boss position was created to detect these gases before they became dangerous. The five combinations are called black damp, white damp, fire damp, stink damp, and after damp. These are important because these gases played a huge part in why this rescue attempt for this mine disaster failed. Black damp happens in coal mines and other places such as sewers, wells, and ship holds. Basically, when a coal seam or other source of coal is exposed to the air in a poorly ventilated mine shaft, it begins to absorb the oxygen that is left in the air, leaving the carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and water vapor behind. White damp is when coal explodes and a noxious gas is formed. It forms usually in an enclosed environment of a coal mine. It is often composed of carbon monoxide and hydrogen sulfide. Fire damp is also found in coal mines and is composed of several flammable gases. Methane is the most common. Most commonly, it is found in bituminous coal seams. Most often, these coal seams are filled with methane gases which can trigger explosions. If a pocket of fire damp is highly pressurized, it would be called a bag of foulness historically. Stink damp is hydrogen sulfide. This highly flammable and toxic gas is heavier than air and can accumulate in coal mines. Although at first these pockets smell like rotten eggs, the smell can quickly disappear as it deadens the sense of smell and this makes the pockets very dangerous. After damp is a toxic mixture of gases that form after a mine explosion from fire damp. When mixed with coal dust, this can make a second explosion more likely. It is composed of mainly carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrogen, hydrogen sulfide, and methane. The carbon monoxide component of after damp is what makes it so deadly. The public began to demand oversight of the mining operations. This was due to the explosion at the Monaga mine. There was a total of five mining disasters that month of that year in West Virginia. In 1912, the United States Congress created the United States Bureau of Mines. Its main function was to investigate and inspect mines to reduce the likelihood of future explosions and loss of life. It also had the goal of limiting the waste of human and natural resources. The Bureau of Mines would also set up a field office to train crews, investigate disasters, and provide rescue services. However, the Bureau was given very little power to enforce mine regulations and safety. This would change in later years. But the Mononga was the first disaster to start the chain to lead to the safety and health regulations for the miners. We would like to take a moment to remember all of those who lost their lives. When it comes to mine disasters and strikes, they are historical events, but we would like to also remember that they were real people involved in these real events. May their families find peace and those who lost their lives rest in peace as their memories are always a blessing to us all. Thank you for watching our video. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we bring you the history of the Appalachian Mountains. Please like, subscribe, and share below. Also hit the bell for notifications of future videos. And once again, be sure to leave us a hey y'all in the comment section below. Thank you for continuing to support us and watch our videos.